Good afternoon, everyone. Chris here with LazyFA.com. Happy Sunday. Hope everybody had a great week, despite the market getting a little bit crazy last week. Um, if you haven't seen these videos before, what we're doing is each week we do a quick fundamental analysis video just looking at a stock using Lazy FA. We look at the fundamentals and the financials and just kind of talk about it a little bit. So that's what we're going to do this week. And uh, we're actually going to be looking at a, a company that someone requested in the Reddit Discord channel. Um, so this is not a company that I've looked at before. This is uh, Sorrel Auto Parts. Um, <clears throat> Like I said, despite the fact that the market got a little crazy last week, there were a lot of good opportunities. Um, I do like this chart. I think it's pretty cool overall. I think it looks, let me look at like, if we zoom out on the daily, I think they've got this kind of big like coil going on right now. And so it looks like it's sort of coming to an apex here. So it's probably going to make a fairly big move somewhere between 6 and $7 within the near future here. Uh, it looks like it's got support around five bucks maybe. Um, so if we can kind of stay in this coil, let's make this a little bigger so y'all can see it. Yeah, there we go. So if we can kind of stay within this big coil here and then break out to the upside, maybe over $7 or seven fifty. dollars um, that's probably going to be where you're going to get your next big upwards move. If you break the bottom of this coil, then uh, it's probably not uh, not a, a good pattern anymore. So um, that said, let's take a look at the fundamentals, considering this is, after all, a fundamental analysis video. Let's go ahead and clear those drawings off. Um, and let's head back over to Lazy FA. So uh, Lazy FA, if you're not familiar with it, is an automated uh, application to um, analyze stocks. So it pulls in all of the information off of your financial statements, the income statement, cash flow statement, balance sheet, things like that, and uh, plots them all out on charts for you. And then along the sidebar here, you've got the ability to do red flag analysis. You can look for manipulation in the numbers. There's a couple of fraud detection models in here. And then uh, one of the things I'm working on right now is a sentiment analysis. So I stood up another website, which I'll talk about at the end uh, that y'all can mess around with for free. And um, that'll give you a little bit of extra insight, I guess. Um, so anyway, let's look at this. So Sorrel Auto Parts, uh, I believe this is a Chinese auto parts manufacturer, if I remember right. I've traded this company in the past, but I've never really looked at their financials. So uh, they distribute automated, automotive brake systems and other safety related auto parts to automotive original uh, OEMs and the related aftermarket in the People's Republic of China. Yeah, so this is a PRC, People's Republic of China, uh, auto parts manufacturer. Um, I believe, if I remember right, they do like brake systems for like big trucks, commercial vehicle braking systems, and uh, also passenger vehicle braking systems. Uh, so this is uh, a, it's a Chinese company. Um, it's headquartered in the PRC, founded in 2003. Uh, this is a, uh, a fairly low float company with only 7.95 million shares in the float, and it is very high short percentage. So take these numbers here on you know the financial statements with a grain of salt because this is a low float company. There is a high short percentage. It is a Chinese company. They have different accounting standards. So you want to take these numbers with a grain of salt, but this is the information that is public. So that's what we're going to work with. Um, everything looks green for the most part. Um, so burn rate is something that I always look at. Burn rate tells you how much cash they have left, basically. So as of September 17, they had um, <coughs> 8.35 million in cash. Let's see if that's accurate. Um, their earnings are coming up pretty soon also. So that's going to change in the very near future. So that'll be interesting. So cash and cash equivalents. <coughs> So, oh, that's annual. So that's 13.53 um, as of 2016. And then uh, most recent quarterly data, 8.35 million. So as of September 30th, 2017, they had 8.35 million in cash. Um, their earnings, like I said, are coming up in the near future here, I think on the 29th. Uh, yeah, so 329 after market close, these guys will be releasing earnings. So uh, pay attention to their cash because they've got, uh, <clears throat> right now it looks like they're okay because they're not burning too much cash, but uh, historically they've come a little bit close. 
you know, they've come within as of 2012 for, or sorry, 2016, for example, they had, you know, just seven months worth of cash left and they were burning quite a lot per month. So uh, that's something that you always want to pay attention to because uh, cash is what makes the world go round. So, um, so overall revenue looks good. Costs uh, looks like they're slightly lower overall than revenue. So that's good. So you've got some gross profit in here, obviously. Uh, yep. And then net income up, up, up. So it all looks good on the surface. TTM revenues. Let's take a look at this. So there's TTM per share. Um, I usually look at per share revenues also just because uh, per share numbers, just because sometimes you'll see trends in the actual raw numbers that don't exist when you look at the per share numbers because the company has been diluting the stock. Uh, so that's just a good quick sanity check to make sure that the trend actually is up. And then uh, Q over Q growth. I mean, it looks like, you know, since 2016, their growth has been increasing pretty significantly in terms of revenue. Uh, net income is a little bit wonky. Um, they've got some big spikes here, so I would want to know what those are all about. Uh, let's look at debt. They are loading up on the debt a little bit, but uh, overall, let's look at like, yeah, so their debt to equity ratio is basically 1.0. Uh, price to earnings has been on a decline, so I guess that's a good sign. Current ratio also on a decline. Uh, let's look for red flags. So let's take a look at the income statement. By the way, I never go through any of this stuff in these videos, but there is a lot of information that uh, you can glean from these charts and uh, these custom ratios that only Lazy FA looks at. Um, and uh, if you hover over the charts, it will explain, you know, it highlights the cells that are relevant to those charts. So all you need to do is just hover over them. And uh, there's a lot of information in here that I don't go over in the videos. Um, so the only red flags on the income statement are we've got these ones for the most part, they will always trigger. Uh, so these are not a huge concern. This is revenue strictly increasing, EPS strictly increasing, and uh, debt load strictly decreasing. These ones almost always trigger because there's very few companies where revenue always goes up or debt always goes down, right? There's not really, that's not really a common thing. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about those. The only thing that I really pay attention to is if the monotonicity is very, very low, because that indicates that there's a very low percentage of time when the element is doing what it's supposed to do, right? So revenue strictly increasing. Monotonicity is 84.62%, which means that over the course of the entire time period that we're looking at, which is um, about 13 years with uh, Sorrel here, 84% of the time revenue was increasing. So that's a, that's a good sign. Um, if this was 10%, then that's different, right? Because that means that over the last 13 years, revenue has only increased year over year. 10% of the time. So uh, that's not as not as good. Um, the other ones that have triggered here, outliers and shares outstanding growth. So there's a couple of spikes in shares outstanding. It looks like the outliers were uh, the latest, most recent one was back in 2009. So I don't know if that's really an issue anymore. Um, but let, we'll take a look at shares outstanding just to make sure that they're not diluting too much. Uh, this does trigger the excessive dilution alert. However, it's only 3.43%. The cutoff is 3%. Uh, and this is normally for like mature companies anyway. Um, companies that are new growth companies will need to dilute a lot more. So you need to take that into consideration as well. And then uh, the top to bottom line uh, divergence alert did trigger. Uh, the reason for this is that net income growth is outpacing revenue growth by a ratio of 2.27 to one. So basically average net income growth over the last 14 years has been twice as big, almost two and a half times as big as their revenue growth. So that means that they have to be doing something in order to cut costs or they are messing with the numbers somehow to make their net income grow twice as fast as revenue. So um, you wanna pay attention to their probably their expensing policies, their revenue recognition policies and things like that. You're gonna to have to go to the SEC filings to find those things, but that's always a good 
this is a good red flag to trigger, especially if it gives you like a specific, you know, specific ratio of how fast, you know, how much net income is outpacing revenue growth. So that's just something to pay attention to. You might want to take a look at their revenue recognition policies and just understand how they are recognizing their revenue. Make sure they're not stuffing the channel and stuff like that. Um, let's pop up the dashboard again in another, another tab here just so that we can take a look at shares outstanding before I forget about it. Uh, meanwhile, let's look at the balance sheet. I don't know why that is taking so long to load. So shares outstanding, weighted average shares. So, you know, nothing major here. Right, if you see like a huge uptrend like this, that's way different, right? These guys are not diluting too much. They've not added new shares since 2010. So uh, no concern there, really. Uh, okay, on the balance sheet, average liabilities growth outweighs average assets growth. So at some point, assets will overtake, uh, liabilities will overtake assets if they have not already done so because liabilities are growing faster than assets. Uh, simple check there. There's also an, a couple outliers in accounts receivable growth and the burnout risk that we talked about earlier that has triggered also. Um, that's based on the annual data though. Um, I'm gonna actually update this so that you can switch these flags to check quarterly data also, but for right now they only check an, annual data. Um, and so that's not really a concern right now since it's a bit outdated being from December, 2016. If we go to the homepage here, and flip this to quarterly data, you'll see that their burn rate is much lower, you know, under $100,000 a month. And do, 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 they have 104 months worth of cash left at that rate. Uh, keep in mind that you might wanna recalculate that burn rate just because this is only looking at the last three months. So if anything has changed in the last three months that made their cash burn much lower than the average, uh, then this will, this will be deceptive. So you wanna probably look at their annual burn rate, which um, historically, you know, as of last year was about $2 million a year or $2 million a month rather. Um, it's their net cash flow divided by 12 basically, or we divide by three for quarterly data. Um, but they've got $13.53 million worth of cash uh, as of December 16, as of September 17, they've got 8.35 million. So this could still be a potential flag. You just wanna probably look at their burn rate a little bit more closely. Uh, outliers and outs, uh, accounts receivable, what have we got here? That's from 2003, 2004, we don't really care about that at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that one right now just because it's so old. Cash flow. Again, I want to remind everybody just to keep, take these numbers with a grain of salt because this is a Chinese company and they do have different accounting rules. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, only red flags on the cash flow statement are that net cash flow and free cash flow are both currently negative. Um, so as of December 2016, free cash flow was negative 10.46 million and net cash flow was negative 22.17 million. So cash flow can be a little bit more telling than earnings. Their net income looks really good. Let's look at their operating cash flow. Not so pretty, right? It's significantly, you know, they're generating significantly less cash than uh, from operations than what their net income would lead you to believe. So that's just something that I would pay attention to. Uh, let's look at free cash flow. I think I've got that metric down here. Free cash flow, the free cash flow per share. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is kind of all over the place. Um, and this is going to change quarterly, right? Because this is probably in a cyclical industry, but you definitely want to pay attention, I think, to what this company is doing in terms of cash flow, because their revenues and their net income because of the different accounting standards in China are gonna be a little bit different from what is probably reality. So uh, only other things I wanna look at right now, 
I'll just show you real quick one of the um, revenue or expense manipulation pages. Um, again, this is sort of laid out in a top to bottom, so like a top to bottom reading sort of uh, flow. And basically what you wanna do is look at each individual section. I need a collapse all button apparently. So you wanna look at each individual section, right? Here's the overview, kind of explains what the normal standards are. And then you've got uh, some charts from the income statement, some charts from the balance sheet, and then this section, which explains what you should be looking for on those charts. Same thing down here for cash collection, revenue capacity, and cash conversion. And then you've got capacity and cash conversion concerns down here. So these are the things that you should be looking for on these charts. So just kind of showing you how to use the site. It's a little bit, I mean, if you just follow it from top to bottom, it's a, it's a lot easier to understand exactly what's going on with these companies. So uh, pay attention to that. The only other things I wanna look at are, the expenses page is laid out the same way, by the way. I'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter because they were getting kind of long. Uh, the Benish M score just checks whether or not the company is likely to be a manipulator based on these different items, which are explained below. Uh, as of 2017, they were not likely to be a manipulator. Negative 2.58 is pretty normal. Um, and it looks like they have hovered. They got a little bit wonky up here. The cutoff is negative 1.78 is where this Benish M score starts to call a company likely to be a manipulator. If you click on the more info link down here, you can actually go to the paper. You can read the paper, you can read about all the research that they did. This is a, a fantastic paper, I think, and uh, they came up with some really cool stuff. Same thing with Benford's Law. The raw paper is right here. There you go. Um, so you can go ahead and read that as well. So that's Benford's Law. This is a fraud detection mechanism or a um, manipulation detection mechanism. It identifies numerical irregularities in large data sets. So big clumps of numbers. We look at all of the numbers regardless of what they are and we decide whether or not they are natural uh, or if they've been manipulated. Um, this looks pretty normal. Here's the normal distribution the black line being the normal distribution uh, of leading digits, and then the bars being what Sorrel's distribution was. And so if you just take one of these, for example, uh, numbers that started with five on the balance sheet, Sorrel had 9.26% of their numbers on the balance sheet started with five. In a normal data set, it would be about 8%. So uh, this looks pretty normal. It follows the distribution relatively closely. For contrast, we'll pull up uh, a we'll pull up Planet Fitness, which uh, I we had analyzed a couple of weeks ago. This one does not follow the distribution closely. You can see these ones are all over the place. So this is the type of stuff that you should be looking for on this section of the site. Uh, this, to me, this says that Planet Fitness is messing with the numbers. So just something to uh, give you a little bit of insight as to you know how to use this. Uh, so that's that. Um, so overall, uh, I don't really know a whole lot about this company, but I mean, the numbers look good. I would want to read their most recent annual report, learn a little bit more about the company. And then uh, also I want to pay attention to their earnings, which are coming up on the 29th and see what those look like as compared to, you know, where they currently stand, you know, make sure that everything still looks in line. But overall, I like the chart. I like the numbers. I don't know if the numbers are accurate because we're talking about a Chinese company, but it's worth paying attention to, I think. So let's look at the earnings and then we'll see where we can go from there. Uh, now, I mentioned earlier that I had been messing around with some sentiment analysis stuff. So I stood up this website, uh, literally just did this last night. And this is gonna take a second to pop up because it's on a free server at the moment. But um, in the meantime, I'm gonna to go to sec.gov and I just want to, let's can this. 
Oh shoot, that's not what I needed to do. Sentient. Okay, so this is very, very basic right now. This is what is eventually going to be merged into Lazy FA. Um, and if we look at, for example, this company's last 10K, what I'm gonna do is just Control A to select all, Control C to copy. I'm gonna paste it in here. This will be automated eventually. And then hit interpret, give it a second. And we have the top 10 most common words, top 10 most common bigrams, and top 10 most common trigrams. So as you can see, because I'm not doing really any filtering on these yet, December 31st, 2016 is gonna be you know in the top thing. So I'll be eliminating this stuff, but there is some stuff in here that you might find useful just by throwing in the most recent quarterly report, throwing in the uh, 8Ks and things like that. Um, break systems for obvious reasons. Uh, but joint venture might be an interesting term to control F4 in the financial state in the uh, SEC filings. Development zone facility, also another one that appeared 35 times in the annual report. Uh, and land use rights. So these are things that could potentially be significant because they're appearing a lot in the SEC filings. Um, this is just like I said, it's a very basic sort of sentiment analysis thing. This is using a tool called the Natural Language Toolkit. And I'm going to be modifying this significantly before it ends up on Lazy FA. But in the meantime, um, it's free to use. It just takes a second to load because it's on that free server at Heroku. Um, but feel free to put anything into this. It's kind of interesting. You can put whatever you want into it. You copy and paste the homepage of CNN versus the homepage of Fox News and see all the stuff that they're talking about. You can put news articles in here to get the gist of the article. Um, you know, this is very, very basic right now, but I'm actually working on it as we speak. So it's going to become really cool. I'd encourage you all to go and um, check it out and mess around with it. Let me know if you have any feedback. Um, so that's that. Thanks for tuning in again. Let me know if you have any questions. If you want to provide your own analysis to this, um, what I do is I'll make this company free to analyze for the rest of the week. And so until next Sunday, uh, this will be one of the free tickers. Even if you're not using a paid account on Lazy FA, you'll still be able to analyze this specific company as well as the other ones which are always free like Tesla, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and those types of companies. So um, if you want to provide your own analysis, feel free to do that. Just drop it in the comments. And thanks as always for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Peace out.